Hello and welcome to chapter 11, reporting and analyzing shareholders' equity. All right, so I will admit it took me far too long uh, as an undergraduate student to realize that shareholders' equity was the same as equity. So please, uh, in accounting, we like to have a couple different names, if not more, depending on the company you work for, for the same accounts. Rest assured, shareholders' equity is equity. This is our uh, balance sheet, the other side of our balance sheet equation, where assets equal liabilities plus shareholders' equity. All right, let's dive in. On the agenda for this week, we will be looking at three learning objectives. We'll be looking at the major characteristics of a corporation, so revisiting some topics that we lightly touched on at the beginning of the course. We'll then talk about the debits and credits and how to record share transactions. And then we will also talk about my one of my favorite parts, uh, and that is dividends. Uh, how do we get money out of the company to our shareholders? After all, it's shareholders' equity. How do we return some of that equity? Or how do we share the growth of the corporation without selling the corporation? So we will look into those strategies in learning objective number three. All right, so to continue on with the learning objective number one, the corporate form of an organization. So think back to the first week or two of the term. Here, we looked at where corporation was a separate legal entity that was separate and distinct from its owners, has most of the rights and privileges of a person, um, and may be public or private, where a public company has many shareholders and shares are publicly traded and held. So, you know, when you hear about the NASDAQ or the Toronto Stock Exchange, those are public companies. You can go to the exchange and purchase those shares. Then we also have private companies that tend to have very few shareholders. I say tend, because not always, but tend to have very few shareholders. Uh, might have as few as one shareholder with one share. And these shares are closely held and are frequently not traded. All right, so what are the advantages? Why should people incorporate? Why should they not incorporate their businesses? Well, uh, a corporation is a uh, separate legal entity. Not a secret, it's a separate legal entity. And um, as such, this separate legal entity can live on beyond what it, it can live on indefinitely. It lives on until it ends. And so you can have shares in a company and they become inheritable by heirs. So it's a way in which you can estate plan. It's a way in which you can um, you can plan your business's operations into perpetuity. And um, oh, there's a, a TV show that people. I am not like a big TV show watcher, but I I follow the the, the drama surrounding TV shows and movies and whatnot. And oh, Succession. So yeah, apparently there is a whole show that talks about you know the ongoings of a business beyond. However, if you want to know the latest and greatest with that show, I have no clue. I just know that it exists and that there's lots of drama in there. All right, going back to the advantages of a corporation. Uh, ease of transferring ownership, rights of shares, whether it is through estate planning or rather uh, just you know buying and selling. You don't have to individually register each asset or each piece of land, but rather you're like, cool, who owns this company? This share, awesome, one bought that share, cool, done. Uh, and there's a separation of management and ownership. So with a sole proprietor, the owner is the person and the person is the owner, and I guess the owner could hire a manager, but then they'd be you know, reporting back to the owner. Like it's just very, <sighs> Where the business stops and starts is indistinguishable. Uh, with a corporation, sometimes, um, so for example, let's say, I don't know if they're, let's take a, uh, anybody have like a Mr. Sub or like think of it like a no name Subway. Um, sorry, Mr. Sub, I loved your subs. Uh, but like think about a no name Mr. Sub or no name Subway, like a mom and pop shop uh, that has a, a bunch of uh, employees working there. Well, one day it might be owned by uh, mom and pop uh, X, and then the next day it might be owned by pop and pop Y, right? 
Uh, so it really, and the owner, like pardon me, the, um, the ownership may have changed, but the employers are still going in to the same shop, making the same subs, um, serving the same kind of customers uh, in the same location with the same ingredients, yada, yada, yada. So they might not even know that uh, the ownership changed because the management is separate from the ownership. The people that make their schedules are, the, are you know, likely different from the people that are earning the residual value. All right, uh, there is the potential for reduced income tax, potential for deferred income tax, tax planning in general, lots more fun stuff that you can do with a corporation versus a sole proprietor. All right, but this does come with disadvantages. It is costly to do all of that income tax planning, especially if you are not an accountant. Uh, it is complex uh, to follow government regulations. There's a lot of uh, compliance that is required um, and there's lots of disclosure. And so navigating that, you either have to spend, you will have to spend a lot of time and then uh, depending on what your area of expertise is, you may need to spend some money in order to remain compliant lawyers and accountants. All right, so that brings me to our first discussion question. What, why might the advantages of a corporation differ for a large publicly traded company compared to a small private company? Uh, give this video a pause, give it a think, and we'll talk soon. All right, well, this is really one of those, uh, there's no quote right answer. It's, is it reasonable? Is it justified? Does it make sense? So let's take a look back to and at our previous slide and think about large and private, pardon me, large public and small private companies. All right, so some of these separate legal entity, um, ability to acquire continuous life, okay. So I would say that it's different for the large public company to have a continuous life. The large public company, uh, this makes uh, strategy, it makes acquisition, it makes, um, Ooh, like joint ventures. It just makes uh, the strategy and how we're gonna do deal with perhaps uh, international, uh, both regulations as well as potential collaborations. Because uh, now you have a legal entity and you now have um, the different laws and you can kind of, you know, for example, uh, I believe it's Apple has um, its registered headquarters in Ireland for some tax purposes. Uh, so that's, you know, it's an international company, likely has directors um, all over the place. Uh, if, it, if Apple was registered in Canada, um, you know, we would definitely have some discussion about where are the Oh gosh, what is it called? There's um, it's like it's not brain and body of your directors, but it effectively talks about different residency. However, uh, so some of that more complex, you know, if you are Apple, you have a bunch of different lawyers, you have a bunch of different shareholders, you have the means and the the payoff to invest a lot in uh, international tax uh, and accounting planning. So lawyers and accountants. Whereas, let's think back to a small private company, having a continuous life might be really, really good uh, because what if you have some, you are, uh, say, a couple, you um, have children that you would like to pass along your small business to, except uh, you have four children and two of them are not interested in continuing on with the business and two are by having it be incorporated you might decide to sell the entire business to a third party and you know equally split the cash amongst the um, the four children uh, you may choose to set up a loan structure through the company where the two children that want to be part of the company buy out the two children that don't want to be a part of the company uh, you know there's just a whole bunch of different uh, strategy and planning so i know i've said strategy for big companies strategy for small companies strategy for public companies strategy for private companies honestly um it's because the strategy drives a lot like strategy you know what are we where are we gonna be in three to five years? That vision really does drive, you know, um, as you know, or as you will continue to develop and learn, that drives the operations. And operations is what does the next 12 months look like? So when you have a corporation, yes, you have increased cost complexity. It can kind of be a pain in the ass. Uh, and so if you do not 
If your goals are to survive and have some ownership in your job, perhaps it's best not to incorporate. However, if you want to mitigate risk, if you want to um, provide some increased options in your future, you know, such as any of these, it really can be a, a good idea to incorporate, whether you're a big public company or a small company. Uh, so it really is scale and scope and individuality. It's about seeing that list of advantages and being able to tailor it to who is the user, big public company, small private company, and what are their needs, specifically likely um, strategic, though uh, the strategy will help drive, you know, what are our options for tax deferment or tax minimization uh, in this year, so operational as well. All right, uh, that's a bit of, I feel I could, because I could go on with this um, on and on and on. Um, you know, separating management um, and ownership. Well, we see, um, you know, some recent news about um, OpenAI letting go uh, their founder. Uh, so the board firing the founder and CEO um, Sam Altman on Friday. So that was, you know, the board of directors are the people that are steering the ship and firing uh, the executive. And so, you know, uh, separation from management and ownership for better or worse time will tell. Um, and so if you were a sole proprietor, you, you would be in charge of all of this and there wouldn't really be the ability to fire yourself. Uh, so anyways, there's just some differences between sole proprietor and corporation. And then um, what are the advantages for both the big public companies as well as the small private uh, corporations. But they do have a lot of different overlap. Again, I'll come back. The largest differences tend to be uh, scope, um, scope and scale, as well as um, that strategic side. What do the users want? What are their needs? All right, uh, this is it for the first learning objective. Again, we were revisiting our what we touched on a bit in the corporation. And then in the next video, let's talk about how to actually do the debits and credits and what that would look like for the um, transactions of the shares themselves. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, welcome back and I'll see you in the next video.